Good afternoon. The purpose of this video is to provide a demonstration of my Digitizer app. The app is available from the MathWorks file exchange. The purpose of the app is to get numerical data from the content of an image. I will assume you are able to download and install the Digitizer app on your own. After opening the image, or after opening the Digitizer, we can load an image. In this case, we have data representing the voltage and capacity as a function of temperature for a battery. The first step in using the digitizer is to specify the calibration points within the image. So here we can see that we are being asked to specify the X minimum. So we will click on the lowest point, the lowest zero. We're going to do a Cartesian data importation and the X max. Now the Y minimum and the Y maximum. The skew or slight angle to the plot will be handled automatically by the calibration. So we need to specify what numerical values these points represent and 4.2. So you can see the green plus is the X minimum, green X, X maximum, uh, magenta plus, Y min, magenta X, Y max. They can be reset as a group or individually. Now that we've specified the calibration points, we can name the figure uh, temp data. The first dimension is capacity. We will, in the independent dimension, the second independent, second dimension specified in the chart is temperature. Uh, actually, we can change that to volts. Volts. And the first channel, we, uh, the first temperature we'll input is the green one, which is 45C. Type in there, specified. Now we just click on the chart. Oh, I was a little off there, so let's adjust that guy. And continue inputting data. You can go back and forth as you need. The density of the plots can or the the density of the data points can be adjusted after the fact. Let's add a second one. Let's skip down to zero degrees C. Zero. Make new. So now this is the black line. Click along that. I'm gonna have to change those a little bit. Let's adjust those. There we go. And let's plot the data. There we go. Let's see, does that is that has that data been imported correctly? Uh, no, it looks like I missed a zero in my calibration. So let's replot that. 2000. Yep, looks correct to me. Now, we can export the data in a few different ways. Uh, most simply, we can output the text to the workspace. So here we have the independent dimension in the first column and the dependent data in the second column. So this 0 to approximately 2000, 0 to 2000, as well as the, uh, the voltage values for the two temperatures we entered. Secondly, we can output the data in a structure. The output was created here as out. And um, oh, there was a difficulty creating the structure because the two temperatures have different uh, capacity breakpoint values. So we can reinterpolate to a common schedule with MATLAB vector notation, let's say every 50, see what that looks like, up to 2000. And we're going to specify data should not go below three. So any, any values that go below three will be held at three. And we're going to apply. There we go, so that linearly interpolated. That looks good to me. Let's clear that. Let's re-output the data to the workspace, in this case, Oh, yep, that is the format I expected. 
values. So that is the voltage for the two temperatures we entered. Out dot dp. Capacity and temp are the independent arguments. And uh, that are the independent breakpoints in the capacity dimension. Uh, some other options we have here for adjusting data. We can adjust the Y component on its own. Uh, this is useful as we just specified the horizontal components. We don't want to shift that around. Let's say we don't like those and we want to replace those with interpolations. Oop, that, yep, that makes sense because it interpolated down to there. Okay, um, and we have an undo button. We can delete individual points um, if we entered too many and replace with interpolation, we did that. Uh, this data is looking pretty smooth, but let's just say we wanted to filter it anyway and we're going to run it on all the dimensions. There we go, so smoothed, eh, but we don't like that. Let's undo that. So we can go back and different interpolation methods, all the standard ones. Um, the other option we have down here is we can curve fit using the polyfit n package available in the file, MathWorks file exchange uh, created by John Delarenko. Uh, let's just see what a fourth order model looks like. Uh, that's a okay result. So yeah, we get uh, a few warnings there, but I believe it's still, yeah, it still created a model. So you can read up on his documentation to understand how to make use of those polynomial models. <clears throat> the thing we can do here is we can save every, the calibration and the data that we've uh, created. Demo uh, date demo uh, config. Yep. So now we have a new .dig file. Uh, those files can be put into source control, save, saved, moved around, given to other people in the office. If you need to verify the data you've imported and understand whether or not it was done correctly, uh, you can reload those uh, DIG files. So let's just uh, shift this around visually. Left click to change to different uh, second dimensions or click on that. Let's just make sure that's Zero, 01. All right, well, let's reload the configuration and we're back to where we were. Um, one other option for exporting, exporting is if you have my, um, my other, one of my other packages, the data table lookup class, the data that was the output in the term out would uh, then be a uh, class or an instance of a class that has many useful functions for dealing with the matrix data in this format. Another type of chart that can be imported are patch type charts. So again, we have to start by specifying Calibration, I'll just do this a little quickly here. Zero, that's gonna be 100, uh, 1100. And zero, maximum 0.5. Here we are going to specify a patch. And in this you have to go in one direction. Um, you're not able to go back and forth with uh, in inputting new points. Um, it's just kind of a restriction of what's what you're, what you're doing. And to confirm that we've imported that correctly, that looks correct to me. 
same output options uh, exist. Um, another option we have here, we can do log plots. You'll notice that this one is skewed um, as well as uh, log. So it's Cartesian. Let's just take that as the minimum. X minimum, uh, 1e, 1, e, one oh, 0, uh, 1e, e, 3, uh, that's 1e, 2, and 1e, uh, 10. Now we need to specify that we are dealing with logs and no longer patches. So just as we did previously, we can click on the chart to specify the data, output the data, and is that, uh, that looks correct to me. So you see it did, did account for the skew correctly and the, the log, 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 log nature of it. Uh, the other option we have, we can import polar data in this case, we will start by clicking the center of the polar plot and then the zero, th zero angle and full radius. Full radius magnitude here is 5e negative 5. And the convention of the plot is positive counterclockwise. Uh, this now is uh, first dimension is frequency. The polar demo, and that's uh, hertz, and we can input the thousand hertz channel. So now I'm just going to click on the red to go around. And let's make another one. Let's do the 2000. Make new 2000. Doing this a little bit quicker and rougher than you might in production. And plot. And we now have our data in MATLAB format. Output data to MATLAB. There we go. Um, unfortunately, the Interpolation options are not available in the Polar. Um, one other useful thing you can do with the tool is if you need to get measurement, you have a scaled drawing and you need to get measurements off something in particular, you can specify the known dimension. Uh, in this case, the wingspan and the height. X minimum is zero. Maximum 11 meters, zero, and it is uh, 2.72 meters tall, no longer working in log. Now if I want to know the width of the fuselage, click there, click there, and I can out, output the data to workspace. And in this case, uh, the X values are a little over one meter wide. Uh, very useful if you need to get numbers or sizes off of a known known dimensions known dimensioned image. Um, lastly, um, you can import data that is in a time history format. It's exactly the same procedure. So specify your calibration points. Click on follow a curve. Data is output in the same format. Um, it just it's a it's a time history instead of you know a dependency. So if you have any questions, uh, please post them in the comments below um, or in the MathWorks file exchange uh, uh, area. And uh, thank you for using my product.